All righty, we are going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so I want to welcome all of you uh, to our webinar tonight for July 2022. Uh, my name is Jansen Lemley. I am your Family Adventure Camp Director. Uh, a couple of things are on the screen, um, so you are aware. Uh, this is a webinar format. Um, so the way that that works is attendees, uh, being you that are watching, uh, do not have your camera or mics enabled. Uh, so if you have a question, please type it into the chat room. We'll be happy to address those uh, questions throughout our webinar uh, tonight. Uh, and then if it, it makes more sense to ask that or to answer the question at the end when we have our question and answer session, we will do that as well. Uh, I'm joined tonight by a couple of uh, panelists, uh, being uh, Kevin Wasi, and uh, uh, we have Kevin Wasi. Um, and Michael Kaywood, and then also we have a new team member at uh, Tohoya for the summer, uh, Jacques Behar, and we'll get to him in just a few moments. So again, welcome. We are super excited to have you uh, and to be able to uh, talk to you about um, the progress that we are making uh, at Finley Adventure Camp as part of our program and property transformation. So our objectives for tonight, uh, we want to go through our purpose and focus, which is the primary um, piece of everything that we do, keeps us in line with where we're going and the mission we want to uh, deliver. Our video update, um, a glimpse at our new map, our post survey of results from participants that have already come and experienced our Family Adventure Camp sneak preview. Uh, we have some interviews, um, some are pre-recorded and some are going to be live. Uh, we'll have a little tutorial on how our registration works um, in our new uh, platform, an update on our community and neighborhood preview day that we hosted, updates on all of the progress that's happening in the transformation, primarily from the property standpoint, upcoming work days. And as we've been working through our sneak previews, we have received a lot of frequently asked questions. And so we have started to formulate those into a FAQ uh, for short list. Uh, to be able to identify some of those, and then those will also be posted on the website as well. And then at the very end, we'll open it for Q&A, uh, and myself and the panelists will be happy to address those uh, questions um, as um, you have them. So our purpose for Family Adventure Camp, Family Adventure Camp exists to impact young people and their families through engaging outdoor experiences and activities that emphasize personal growth, character development, and citizenship awareness. For those of you that have been on past webinars, we read this at the beginning of every one of our webinars because it is the focal point of why we're trying to transform um, the program and property at Camp Atahoya, and we want to make sure that uh, this is always our focus, uh, and it's what we think about every time we meet and every time we get together to talk to all of you. So with that being said, uh, I wanna just make sure that we're calling to attention our three tiers of focus. Uh, and these are in, in the ranked in order one, two, three, because number one and number two are the most important, obviously a number one being the most important, but deliver the mission of scouting to more young people. Our second goal and tier of focus is membership, a conversion, finding folks that aren't yet members of the Boy Scouts of America, and hopefully um, giving them an opportunity to try scouting before they buy it. And after their experience at Family Adventure Camp, they'll be sure they wanna buy it and sign up to be a member of the Boy Scouts. And lastly, we wanna be financially, or we wanna be financially um, stable. We want stability. And so those are our, our focuses uh, and what we're in all that we're doing. So now I just wanna, uh, we're gonna watch a quick little a video on some of the updates that we have going on at Tahoya. This summer, your family is invited to be a part of Longhorn Council's newest program, Family Adventure Camp. We are currently in the midst of a major program and property transformation right here at beautiful Camp Tahoya in Belton, Texas. This renovation includes updated bathroom facilities, family cabins, a short-term RV park, a new family fun zone, and family suites, which will feature two rooms, a queen-size bed, bunk beds for the kids, and air conditioning, so your family can enjoy adventures all year round right here in Texas. Now, we still have a lot of work to do with the construction portion of this project, but the property transformation with updated accommodations is just one part of the many changes at Tahoya. We're also offering new programs that will increase usage and provide more opportunities for young people and their Sorry about that. Let's try that again. Families to experience the life-changing scouting program. 
This summer, you can experience a sneak preview of Family Adventure Camp. That's right, you can plan a mini family vacation to Tahoya anytime between July 8th and August 14th. We will be offering program activities and overnight camping. Not all of our new facilities are ready yet, but we still have great accommodations available. Brand new canvas wall tents. Each canvas tent is on a platform and has two beds with mattresses. If you're looking for a truly unique experience, check out our new suspended tree tents, which sleep two to three people. If you reserve one of these accommodations, adventure passes are included with your reservation. Adventure passes are your ticket to participate in a full day of on-site adventures, which will all include scouting's favorites, such as shooting sports, rock climbing, fishing, canoeing, and kayaking. Take a piece of camp home by building a makerspace project or have a true Texas experience by branding a souvenir. Our pool will also be open so you can cool off and escape that Texas heat. If you prefer a more rustic camping experience, we also have traditional campsites available that allow you to bring your own tent. If you book a traditional campsite, you can purchase adventure passes to take part in all the adventures. An overnight stay is not required to participate. You can also experience all the fun of camp with our day use adventure pass option. Camp De Hoya is conveniently located just one mile from I-35 in Belton, Texas. Learn more by visiting longhorncouncil.org slash FAC. We can't wait to see you at Tahoya this, this summer. So that was a little video that we uh, did and had uh, posted out, but wanted to make sure that all of you saw that as uh, things continue to progress and we continue uh, to provide our sneak preview, uh, which is well underway at Tahoya this summer. Uh, so with that being said, I want to um, just uh, pull up here on the map and in just a moment, I'm going to tee up uh, Kevin Awasi to talk a little bit about our experiences that we've had so far. Um, but as you see on the map, uh, this is the start of um, how um, we're starting to see camp transform uh, and uh, the variety of different um, experiences that you can have. Uh, for those of you that have been to Tahoya in, in years past, it has a very similar vibe to it uh, as the road layouts. But as we continue to update our accommodations, as we update our adventure areas um, and opportunities, uh, this map will be an evolution piece. So the map you see now is not the final map, but is the first of many versions as we continue to evolve uh, and uh, be able to connect our families and young people with the mission of scouting. So that being said, I'm going to turn it on over to Kevin to talk about post-survey results. Kevin? Thanks, Jansen. So yeah, we've had a few folks out to camp already this summer to experience Family Venture Camp. And just a quick reminder, uh, Family Venture Camp is a program that's happening at Camp Tahoya on that property. So it's not the be-all end-all of what Tahoya is, but it's a really important piece of the puzzle. And with that, the families who have come out to have experiences with us, uh, they've been mostly weekend experiences and they've all been current scouting families. So these are folks who are already aware of our programs and what we have to offer. Uh, so they came out, had awesome experiences, thanks to Jansen and his staff who provided programming on site. And here's just some quick results we've received from the surveys of those adults who have come out for the, the uh, sneak preview. And as we look at this, we'll kind of update this every month as we get more and more results. So looking across the board, our overall experience total is an 8.5 when asked how they felt their overall experience went. When we look at the rest of the results, um, how likely to recommend Family Adventure Camp, we've been 8.5. Uh, how did you rate the registration process is at a 10, which I thought was very interesting because we've moved to a new registration process for Family Adventure Camp and Tahoya, which is a website called Camp Spot, which Jansen will discuss a little bit later. Uh, the next question was value to cost. We know this is a huge issue right now for families as we look at inflation and other things that are impacting family budgets. Uh, but both groups that came out said that the value to cost was, sub was substantial. They felt they received plenty of value for the cost of the program. Facilities were nine, which is also uh, interesting news because we haven't even finished building our great facilities. So when we look at the program facilities that are available, people are very happy with our ranges. They're happy with our rock wall setup. They're very happy with our kind of waterfront and aquatics area. Although these are areas that still have a lot of work that needs to be done, uh, they, are, they were good enough for our existing scouting families. 
And we're hoping that as we continue to make these improvements, that number will stay high as we provide new updated facilities. Uh, the adventure areas people felt good about with a strong eight and then staff is a 7.5. And I would note with the staffing, uh, we did have a few challenges our very first week. It was new for everybody, um, but we kind of took that and we came back from it for week two and it was fantastic. Um, in terms of how many families have attended so far, I wanna say we had about, we probably had about 15 to 16 youth out on the property. Um, and I would say in all those cases, those kids had adults with them. So we didn't have any kids who came like with a friend. So I would say about 16 families have come through this summer at uh, Family Venture Camp. Thank you for that question in the chat. And if you do not follow us on social media, make sure you're checking out the Longhorn Council uh, on Instagram and Facebook. We've been sharing lots of photos. So with Family Venture Camp, we always wanna make sure that the things we're doing are mission connected. So we've been sharing photos online of those experiences. So here we have uh, the uh, families from PAC 1311 uh, came out. We shared some photos. There were a lot more photos online and we explained kind of what was that mission connection of fishing. It builds confidence, enhances motor skills teaches perseverance and patience. Definitely when I'm fishing, it does that. And it also encourages an appreciation for nature. So that was one of our fishing program adventure areas. Uh, then we also had folks out at the climbing wall. So we do have a uh, portable climbing wall that we're utilizing this summer. We do also have some uh, natural rock face climbing available, which we haven't quite done yet, because uh, that's more for older youth. But obviously again, we're mission connection. It's all about connecting to mission. So rock climbing promotes physical fitness, encourages creative problem solving when you're on that wall, builds confidence and self-esteem. Nothing better than a scout who thinks they can only get a few feet off the ground. All of a sudden they're 25 feet up ringing the bell. And of course it helps with coordination and body awareness. We're not gonna go through all these, but just kind of showing you how we're keeping the promise of scouting during this time. Uh, archery as well. Uh, great photos of our PAC 1311 families out of archery, having a great time. And of course, we also have things going on down at the waterfront area. Uh, we had a group canoeing last weekend. Our first weekend, we did not have anyone out on the water. They were just fishing. But last weekend, the families uh, chose to go canoeing. And that's the joy of Adventure Camp. It's not you know, dictating when you can do things. You have the full menu of options and your family can kind of pick and choose what they want to do and when they want to do it. And speaking of families who came out, I believe, Jance, we also have a quick video of a mother talking about her experience, I think is our next thing on the agenda. Yeah, I have a couple of snapshots here. So let's go ahead and tee those up. I'm a scout mom and um, I chose to attend the Venture Family Camp because first it was exciting. I didn't have to put up my own tent <laughs> and I wanted to try the new um, commodity they had available for us to stay in. And also when we normally do camps, with the council. Um, I always volunteer, so I never get to experience those activities that they have available with my son. If I'm working over here, he's normally with his unit, and um, I just want to enjoy that moment with us together, you know, doing it. So that was, uh, that was uh, Danica, uh, and we have a couple more videos we're just going to show here uh, real quick. Uh, Danica and her son uh, and a family friend of theirs uh, came to Family Adventure Camp, and we're actually the first um, um, set parent and youth to stay in our brand new canvas tents. Uh, they spent two nights, a Friday and a Saturday with us, and had their adventures on Saturday. So when she's talking about those accommodations she did not have to set up, uh, that's because they rolled in and the canvas tent was ready to go with uh, bed frames and mattresses. Uh, and so next up, we're going to hear about um, how did she experience the mission of scouting at Family Adventure Camp? So one way we experienced it, I want to say is um, my son, he was more uh, being the leader in all the activities. And I was really surprised when it came to the canoeing. He was the first to want to get in the canoe because he's terrified of being in the water on a boat. But it was it was it was fun watching him do that and also taking the the lead part as in going first for the rock climbing. Um, me, I'm afraid of heights, so watching him and he didn't give up even even though sometimes he's like, oh, he just his foot couldn't make some of the parts. 
just watching him just keep trying to keep going all the way until he reached the top and rang the bell that pushed me to want to also do it so I ended up doing it but I did it as I went as high as I could because <laughs> but he pushed me to want to try as well so I think um putting that um that bravery in from the scout law you know being brave and that's what kind of that's how we had our like our, our experience <laughs> Oh. And then the last question that, that we asked her is why should other families attend family adventure camp? Because you can like choose what activities you want to do that day. Normally when we do like day camps and things, there's like a, a, a list we have to follow and you have to go here and there. And you can also bring other people with you, like your friends, your uh, other family members. It just It's just not for scouts, it's for everyone. So um it's awesome I, I think everyone should <laughs> try it and go go for it and I mean everything that we learned through the Boy Scouts um like getting up in the morning making the breakfast while the kids are still asleep that's that's one part of my experience that I had to do by myself but I enjoyed it and it was fun and um I think everybody should just do it because um you get to do other things that you're not going to do at regular camps and um, you get to stay on that one uh, event say you don't want to go to everything you can just enjoy what you want to do first your favorite um, events I like that because I was so thankful to have uh, to have a Danica um, uh, at a camp and to provide the interview with us uh, and so I uh, was incredibly uh, blessed to be able to do an interview with her. Uh, and next up, uh, we have, uh, we're going to do a live interview here uh, with our, uh, with a team member of ours, uh, Jacques. Jacques, are you there? I am. Thank you, Jansen. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, Jacques Behar um, is um, part of our Family Adventure Camp team for this summer. Uh, and so uh, Jacques, I want to start off by, can you tell us about yourself and your role at Family Adventure Camp? Uh, this summer is my 30th summer at a, a uh, scout camp on staff, um, and I've done a lot of things, but this summer I'm primarily, uh, my role is co-anchoring the aquatics as well as the uh, climbing uh, wall. Fantastic. All right, so next up, why did you want to be a part of the team for Family Adventure Camp? Um, I have watched the Scouts BSA uh, numbers drop every year, year after year after year. And right now, there's not enough scouts to fill camps. So at this point, the uh, councils are going to either have to sell the camps or rebrand and repurpose them. Um, and why not do it for families? Families, ever since COVID hit, camping in the outdoors with families has been a big, big thing. Why can't we do it? Exactly. I, I, I appreciate that, uh, that standpoint. And every family, you know, the more families that, that, that get to experience what we have to offer, uh, the more young people that we get to impact and potentially those young people become scouts as well. So, so far this summer, um, how do you see the mission of scouting being delivered? All through the, the activities and the program that we provide, it, it's everywhere in everything we do. Clear and cut, I love it. And then, um, so the heat's been the biggest issue of this uh, summer. A lot of folks have asked this question, it's very much a frequently asked a question. Uh, what is the staff doing to help families deal with the heat? We're doing programming a little bit differently and, and planning our program. Uh, in the mornings, we'll do shooting sports and the climbing wall because those are primarily in the shade. Um, in the afternoon, we'll switch over, go to makerspace, which is air conditioned, and of course the pool, and uh, down to the waterfront where the water is a very brisk 40-ish or so degrees. All right, and the last a question that we have for you, and we asked Danika this to get it from her perspective as a parent. Now for you as a team member, why should families and scouting units attend Family Adventure Camp? Very, very simple answer. Have fun in the outdoors. There's nothing better to do. Fantastic, Jock. It has been such a pleasure 
uh, to have you as a part of the team this summer. Uh, Jacques has uh, done a phenomenal job with um, uh, the transformation of our pool uh, and the upkeep of it, uh, and just helping us put into practice standard operating procedures, um, not only at our waterfront um, and at our pool, also within our climbing area. Uh, and uh, Jacques and his wife have just been a tremendous asset uh, to us here in uh, Texas uh, as they made the special trip down from Utah uh, to hang out with us uh, this summer and enjoy some of that Texas heat. So Jacques, appreciate that. Uh, Thanks please for having please. us. Oh, of course. And uh, please feel free to stay on uh, in case there's any questions there that we uh, that you can address. We'd love to have you stay on, but if you got to okay. go, I understand that too. All right, so next up, uh, I want to uh, showcase a tutorial video of how our registration system works. Um, as Kevin alluded to earlier, our registration system is new um, for Family Adventure Camp. Uh, and so I want to take give you a little uh, peek as to what that looks like, and hopefully we'll be providing more tutorials uh, to help make the transition easier as folks navigate this process. We are going to learn how to register for Family Adventure Camp at Tahoya. Currently, we are at longhorncouncil.org FAC, where you can find the latest information for Family Adventure Camp and also the link to register. Click here to register. This will reroute us to our registration site, which is CampSpot. Once we're on the CampSpot page, we'll be able to select the dates in which we're looking to attend, the amount of guests that we're looking to bring, uh, youth under the age of four, elementary age youth, um, youth for, in junior high and high school, and adults. Also on this main page, you'll also be able to see upcoming park events. Um, being on August 13th and 14th, we have an older youth weekend going on at Family Adventure Camp. So let's go ahead and select for that weekend. We're gonna arrive on Friday, August 12th. We're gonna check out on August 14th. Uh, and currently right now, let's go ahead and select. We're gonna have uh, just uh, one adult and one youth attend. From there, the system will tell you what accommodations are available based on the amount of attendees you're looking to have. So in this case, we have a whole lot of options between our suspended tree tents, our canvas tents, our traditional campsites, and our day use only option. If we were to say bring a few more, so let's say we're gonna have two adults and two youth come, you can see that our parameters have been shifted uh, because none of our other accommodations will, will currently house more than four with the exception of our traditional campsites and our day use options. So we know if we, we wanna come and utilize this, the canvas tents, we'll go ahead and select the canvas tent option here. As you can see, the canvas tent will only sleep two. Um, so in this case, what we're gonna to need to do is actually book um, two different canvas tents. So we're going to adjust our guest count so it fits the accommodation that we're trying to rent for. That red box now goes away. And from here, we can select our site location. We can do that here by selecting on the map or down below, we can select what we're looking for. From here, we'll select add to cart. Now you're prompted with a lock your site location. What this is asking is, do you wanna pay an additional $10 to lock in the exact canvas tent that you're looking for, or the other option is by saying a no thank you, you're still guaranteed a canvas tent. However, it might not be the exact location that you selected. So in this case, we selected a 501. We hit a no thank you, there's a good chance we might get tent 504, uh, depending on how do we optimize the usage there at camp. So for this sake of this, we'll select yes, we really want site 501. From here, we'll look at the cart. We can see on here that we have the opportunity to purchase a um, sneak a preview patch. So let's go ahead and get two of those. And there we can go to review our cart. But we still had two other people that wanted to come camp with us. So we can go on down here to continue shopping. We're gonna adjust those accommodations again. We had an additional, we had one adult and one youth looking to attend on that same weekend. We want another canvas tent. We just booked site 501. So let's see if we can find site 502, which is now available. We'll select that as well, hit add to cart. 
Uh, we want to make sure those that we have both of those uh, tents and that we want them side by side. So we are going to pay that lock fee. And from there, we can go in and be able to review our shopping cart, make sure everything is what we need it to be. And from there, we'll be able to select checkout and go from there. There are lots of other variations that you can find on the registration site and other uh, sorts of accommodations as uh, we're always building out new um, opportunities for your family and scouting units to participate in. Stay tuned for more information as we upload more of these videos in the future. Thank you. So a quick little uh, video uh, that you were the first to debut, or that uh, we're debuting at here, uh, and we'll be uh, posting that on our uh, council YouTube page as well as out on Facebook. So with that being said, I want to turn it on over to Michael Kaywood uh, to talk about our community and neighborhood preview day. Thanks, Jansen. Uh, a week ago Sunday, we hosted uh, the neighborhood to come to Camp De Hoya and see what we were up to. Uh, we invited a lot of first responders, but all the neighbors along De Hoya Road and Smith Dairy Road. Uh, we had quite a few people show up, uh, a number of families. We had some people come early. They weren't able to uh, join us for lunch in the afternoon activities, but uh, they wanted to see the property. They had some questions. Uh, some rumors were dispelled uh, about the property being sold uh, and turned into an RV park um, and a number of other things. We also had a, a woman who came uh, to visit um, a brick memorial of her, her brother who passed away when he was 13 uh, as a scout and was actually uh, posthumously um, awarded the Eagle Scout Award. So um, it was kind of neat. Uh, the families um, knew each other some, uh, so they got a chance to kind of meet the, the neighbors as well. Uh, but uh, the, the youth attended, uh, had a great time. They fished, uh, had an opportunity to do shooting sports. Uh, Maker Space was open. We kind of opened up the afternoon to them, uh, and they were all pretty excited about it. They just really hadn't um, thought about what was going on down there at the scout camp and 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 now they kind of see that maybe their future uh, will be attending the scout uh, this camp camp to Hoya as a family adventure camp uh, location uh, since they're right around the corner they may uh, just get a an adventure pass uh, but they may ask actually uh, use it as a backyard sleepover uh, so to speak uh, so it was really great to uh, meet the neighbors uh, we fed them lunch and uh, gave the kids an afternoon of activity. So it was a really great time. Fantastic. Thank you, Michael. Uh, next up, we want to uh, just jump into some of our um, progress um, in our transformation uh, to give you an idea as to, as to how things are going. Uh, so here on the screen is um, Alcoa Freedom um, as, it, as it currently sits there on the left. On the right hand side, uh, if you look in the far back, you'll notice uh, our new canvas tents are there in the back. The front side of this uh, campsite, uh, you can see a lot of the trees are cleared and the sun's going to start shining down in, uh, and that is actually making way for a new um, restroom that will have four um, individualized restroom stalls and four individualized um, shower stalls uh, that is going in. We already have three of those restrooms on the property, uh, but that's why the front end of that campsite is a little bit cleared out because uh, we need to be able to get our crane in there to get those situated. So a ton of effort going in there. We'll talk a little bit more about those canvas tents in just a moment. Uh, next up is our maker space. Uh, this used to be a um, part of our warehouse uh, and during um, our summer camp days uh, we had housed a, um, a um, train set in here um, as part of the Railroading Ameribadge. Uh, and as you can see here on the left hand side uh, we actually had uh, Larry Agregor, which I believe is on the call. Larry actually installed uh, the beam uh, to help support the ceiling uh, and some of the lingering uh, tents or the, the lingering um, train tables are out there in the background. And then the two pictures on the right uh, showcase um, how we have it now set up uh, to, be, be, to be an opportunity for families to work on projects uh, and crafts. Um, part of the, you know, the tie-dyeing, the branding will be taking place ju just outside. Uh, we continue to make efforts on our family fun zone, which was our old uh, maintenance yard. Uh, and currently right now at camp, uh, we have that uh, marked off uh, with some um, caution uh, fencing. Um, so as we continue to work inside of that, folks can still see the, the transformation taking place. Um, but um, at the moment, uh, we want to make sure that um, it's for viewing a pleasure only until we get that transformation done. 
Um, we talked a little bit about this area when we just did our interview with Jacques Behar, uh, but the swimming pool um, has made a transformation across the board. Uh, and not only uh, do we have the pool looking quite good, um, but uh, we have actually uh, spruced up the um, area with power washing of the deck, um, scrubbing of the internal pool, uh, just the overall um, appeal of it on the outside with our, with our flag ropes uh, and working on preparations uh, for next summer now uh, with how do we keep the pool cool uh, and how do we keep the concrete cool on the deck um, so that families can continue to enjoy it even in the midst of a hot summer day. Uh, next up is our catering facility. Um, for those of you, um, this is um, just across um, from uh, our current uh, Comanche uh, campsite. Uh, and so uh, this has the road leads down to our waterfront um, and the trees have, have are continued to be cleared out of this area. Uh, we have removed some additional um, signage there and are preparing uh, to uh, prep that for uh, the um, steel structure that will be going in. And we'll talk a little about the arrival of that steel in just a moment. So things have been happening uh, this summer. Uh, it's been exciting to see uh, the continual transformation that is making place. Uh, Dennis Elliott and uh, his team uh, have done a phenomenal job. And actually, Dennis is on vacation uh, today. So I was filling in for him in that moment. But with that being said, I do want to turn it back over to Michael uh, to talk about our accommodation progress. Thank you, Jansen. As you saw in the uh, video shown earlier, we uh, have wall tents set up. Uh, these wall tents are a lot larger than what you're accustomed to if you've been to summer camp. Uh, they actually host um, inside two twin-sized uh, beds. Uh, they come with mattresses. They give you plenty of room. Uh, to put your gear at the end of the bed. Uh, they also have a deck out in front, a uh, four foot uh, patio, so to speak. And we will be getting Adirondack chairs to sit out on uh, each of the wall tent decks. Uh, we've got uh, seven of eight of them up now. We will hopefully have 10 of them up here pretty soon. Uh, and they'll be available for um, uh, being able to stay in them. This is where Danica sp spent the night with her son. Uh, and uh, I think that was that comment that she made about not having to set up her own tent. Um, these are uh, the what you see here are uh, tents without flies. They do have flies and we will be getting the flies put up uh, in the coming uh, weeks. If you go to the next chart. Jansen mentioned steel. Uh, so uh, last night, uh, we got two truckloads of steel from, um, uh, it was actually from the Port of Houston, but it, <laughs> its original destination was Australia. Uh, and these are, this is all of the steel structure and um, sub flooring uh, for the Echo Suite family suites and for the catering facility that we're putting in uh, right across from Comanche. So we're pretty excited that uh, we have a lot of the pieces and parts that need to go in. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do to uh, grade the areas and, and prepare the, the ground uh, for these structures going up, but you'll start to see um, progress on those uh, here in the coming weeks. And as was uh, shown in the video, uh, we do have two and three person uh, suspended tree tents. Um, I'm told these are really, really comfortable for a nap. Um, I won't tell you who told me that. Uh, but um, uh, the kids that came to our neighborhood preview uh, jumped inside and thought they were incredibly comfortable and really wanted to stay in them sometimes. So uh, they may be back uh, to, to uh, partake in that. Uh, they do have um, quite a bit of room, room in them. The three person uh, tents are 16 uh, feet uh, on each side. Uh, so there, there's a lot of room inside. There's also a space in the middle to store some stuff. And then underneath, as you can see, uh, there are some places to store gear as well. They're suspended uh, about uh, four to five feet off the ground. And, you know, you can kind of pull them down and flip into them if you want to be that um, robust. Uh, but there's also uh, some stools that are going to be coming to help you uh, climb in there if it's a little, little high for you. Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we have a ton of work that we've done uh, so far, but we also have identified that we have a ton more work that we need to do. And so um, Dennis... Elliot, our facilities manager uh, and his team have scheduled out uh, work days over the course of the rest of this calendar year. And so we'd love to invite you out to be a part of all of the transformation that is happening as we continue to work on buildings and trails and preparing um, our adventure 
areas and program areas. So if you're available on any of these days, we'd love to have you out. Uh, if you're looking to overnight camp, uh, camping is on us. Uh, there's no additional cost to camp on those uh, days where you provide us service. Uh, and we'll even provide you a, um, a hot lunch uh, and a donut uh, breakfast. So uh, mark your calendars um, for one of those days um, through August or all the way down through December. So with that being said, uh, we are gonna uh, jump on in to our frequently asked questions. Uh, and so I believe uh, Kevin is gonna take these first few ones. So Kevin, I'm gonna turn this on over to you and I'll just advance the slides. Sure, absolutely, thanks Jensen. And uh, as you're kind of pulling up the slides, uh, Jeffrey had a great uh, comment in the uh, chat talking about the uh, our current website, the way we access reservations for our camps is a little confusing uh, because when you click on that link, you go to our Black Pug, which is our uh, previous registration site, which is still the site for our other properties. Unfortunately, there's no way to kind of redirect from that to camp spots. So it's a little bit confusing right now, but we're hoping that as we continue to educate people and put information out there, uh, that'll get a little bit less confusing. Uh, but also we're launching a brand new website uh, come quarter four of 2022. So hopefully uh, that'll make things a little bit easier as well. Um, so thank you very much for that, Jeff. All right, so quickly, who can participate in Family Adventure Camp? Family Adventure Camp is for everyone. Although uh, right now we're focusing mostly on current scouting families, really any youth age five and older can participate in our activities. All the activities follow the same safety structures in place through the scouting program. Um, with that being said, uh, ch children who are age four and under are free to attend, uh, do not need to have an adventure pass to come onto the property during programming. And absolutely, this is the best part in my mind of Family Adventure Camp is that you do not need to come with your entire scouting unit. And uh, I don't say that to take anything away from the amazing program of our local scouting units, uh, but I just recognize that sometimes uh, families have a thirst for more scouting and it's beyond the ability of the scouting unit to go camping on you know, a super regular basis, especially Cub Scout packs. Uh, so this allows families to enjoy scouting on their own time. And most importantly, it allows us to provide programming at our property frequently. There's nothing worse than a day when there's no kids at camp. So we're providing more opportunities for families to come out, have scouting experiences, uh, whether it's with their unit or not. But units are strongly encouraged to come out as well. We did have PAC 1311 come out and they loved it because they didn't have to plan a thing. The parents went in, made their reservations. They all showed up and had a great day. Uh, how can I reserve more than one accommodation? As the uh, video showed earlier, uh, it is a little tricky sometimes. Uh, when identifying your number of guests, the number of guests you identify will determine your accommodations. So right now, our canvas wall tents only sleep two people. So if you say that you're a family of two adults and two youth, that accommodation won't show up. So you have to kind of match your search based on the accommodations. Uh, that should get a little bit easier over time as we have more accommodations that will sleep an entire family as well. So you can kind of bounce back and forth with the process and add all those things. And of course, if you ever have a question, call me, call Jansen, we'll walk you through it. We can even on the back end do your reservation for you. Uh, what's the minimum and maximum uh, stay length? So here's what we don't want. Uh, when we talk about bringing in RV pads, uh, we do not want to become a place where someone parks their RV for an entire season. So your minimum stay is one night. You can also utilize our uh, day adventure pass option and not stay overnight at all, but our maximum stay is five nights. And that prevents families from you know, coming out onto the property for an extended period of time. Uh, that's not really the point of the program. Awesome, thank you, Kevin. All right, um, is this one yours as well? Maybe it's mine. I can hop in. Uh, so do you need a youth in, or do you need to have a youth in your reservation to camp? Um, and so the short answer is no, you, uh, the system does not um, force you to have a youth in your selection when making that reservation. Uh, and But what we do ask is that there be a youth in your group. And what we mean by that is that we are aware that um, maybe a family a structure might be um, you know, mom and dad and the kids, but then maybe the grandparents are going to come as well. Um, now the grandparents might make their own reservation. And so they would be able to make their reservation 
um, separately, but knowing that there's a kid in their overall group is what we're looking for. Also knowing that what happens if we have um, a group of adult um, leaders within scouting that are gonna do a, a, a leader a training and they wanna reserve a spot out at camp, do they need to have a youth? In that case, no, because they are a part of the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, and so in that case, they do not either. And so the system does not require it, but that is where we're guiding folks towards is that the goal of Family Adventure Camp is to serve young people and to impact families and our scouting units. When is check-in and check-out? Um, check-in and check-out, check-in at 8 a.m. Um, and so you can um, use this to gain access to all the adventures for, for the day. Um, and then your accommodation would be available at 1 p.m. And then the idea being that check-out would be at 11 a.m. And so when we talk about the adventure pass opportunities, uh, you can either choose to do your adventures um, if you're only coming for a night. You can do your adventures on the day that you arrive and spend all day having your adventure, then check in later on in, in the day. Or you can come in that night, um, spend the evening, and then that whole next day have your adventures and then head home. Or you can stay a little bit longer, too, if you wanted. But knowing that we're providing those, those options to be flexible to meet the needs of your families, of your scouting units as we move forward. So this one has been a big one. Uh, this is a new a concept and we've teased it a little bit within our video is what is an adventure pass? Uh, it's an all-inclusive programming and, ex and experiences that will be um, indicated by a wristband. And so the idea is we are trying to remove the a la carte mindset of, of adventure opportunities um, and hopefully ease, it, ease the burden on families, on parents, on leaders, so that when you come to camp, um, the only thing you have to worry about is the initial reservation. And then once you're in camp, you have the opportunity to have all the adventures that you want. Um, and so uh, the last thing that we wanted to do was to um, have a barrier that would cause a family to consider having a opportunity to experience a something because they might not have the additional money that was needed for that piece, or it was an extra five bucks to do, to do this adventure. We decided it would be better if it was all inclusive and tied in together. And that helps us to deliver the mission of scouting uh, to more young people. That's where that focus com comes from. Uh, what activities are generally available during the weekdays versus other weekends, especially right now as we look at our sneak uh, preview? So on the weekday, uh, the weekday does not have a formalized uh, program staff that's there to facilitate our adventure areas. Uh, so primarily we have um, nature and e ecology and things that are at your own pace. Um, but one of the things that we can do is that for folks that come during uh, the week, we can specially uh, coordinate um, adventure opportunities um, for your family or, or unit. Uh, and actually, there's a, a family that's looking to come out of um, that's coming down to Family Adventure Camp next Tuesday out of Keller uh, that did this exact same thing. They're going to come down their uh, their book to reserve our suspended tree tents for a night. And then they're going to have a day of adventure on Wednesday. Uh, and they have personally uh, worked to kind of tailor make what that looks like so we can pr provide those opportunities um, for that family. And then the weekend, uh, the weekend uh, provides all of our adventure areas, uh, being aquatics, climbing, our makerspace, nature and ecology, shooting sports, and at your own pace. And again, everything that we do from a programmatic adventure standpoint uh, follows the age appropriate guidelines um, for the Boy Scouts of America. And so in the terms of Boy Scout terms, there are some things that are Cub Scout appropriate. There's some things that are Scouts BSA inventory inappropriate. So then how do the wristbands work? And so we're uh, moving to a wristband system at Family Adventure Camp. And so there's a couple of di different wristbands. Um, so for the Adventure Pass, there's two different options. Uh, there's the elementary youth, uh, so ages five to 10, which would typically be what we would call a Cub Scout in scouting terms. Uh, and you'll receive one color, one color wristband and our older youth and adults will receive another wristband. The reason for that is we wanna make sure that we're um, adhering to those age appropriate guidelines. Uh, this primarily falls into the realm of shooting sports and for climbing, uh, so we want to be mindful of that. Uh, we're also going to be providing safety bands um, for shooting sports, so as you enter into the shooting sports area, uh, you'll um, be stopped at a safety tent. Uh, you'll receive the safety talk on how to um, safely uh, utilize all of the adventures that are, are over there with BB and tomahawk and rifle and slingshot and archery, and so once you receive that wristband, 
uh, then from there, it's just a matter of getting in line uh, and you're able to experience those adventures as many times as you want uh, without having to put the burden on the range officer uh, to facilitate that safety talk. Uh, we're able to provide uh, the we're able to provide more opportunities uh, to more uh, young people and their families to do these activities because we have a dedicated staff that will be facilitating those safety talks and providing you a safety band. Uh, we're going to have um, swimmer ability checks for boating. Uh, and so in this um, realm, uh, we require that there be at least one swimmer, one certified a swimmer per boat. Uh, and that's the BSA a swim test as it's shown there on the screen. Uh, and so if we have a um, parent uh, and a youth going out in a, in a canoe, there needs to be at least one certified a swimmer. And in the case uh, of a youth and adult, the adult needs to be that swimmer. And then the last uh, band that we have on here is our camper only band. And what this wristband indicates is that you and your family or group have planned your own activities or programming, and you're not going to participate in any of our adventure areas, uh, but you're going to have your own a program that you're doing on um, that you planned out. Um, so that will indicate uh, that as well. And the way the wristbands will work is they'll indicate things um, so that my staff and team uh, know who is able to participate in what sort of activities. Uh, and ultimately, we everyone that's on property will have a wristband um, so we know who is uh, properly checked in and who is yet to check in and who might need to be directed to uh, the Welcome Center to have that check-in process. All right, with that being said, um, I believe, Michael, I got you teed up. Yes, you do. All right. Ready to go. So uh, question is, what if I want to camp or I plan my own program for my family or group? Do I need to purchase an adventure pass? And the answer is no. You don't have to purchase an adventure pass. You can choose uh, to plan your own activities uh, during your stay. And it's only if you want to access any of the adventure areas that you require adventure pass, and that does include fishing. So the question is, well, what overnight accommodation rentals include the Adventure Pass? Well, all the rentals that we have, Family Adventure Camp, at fam Family Adventure Camp, provide, provide the sleeping accommodation include the Adventure Pass, which is canvas tents, suspended tree tents, family suites, and cabins. The Adventure Pass is not included in the traditional campsites or day use. So for instance, if you just have somebody coming for the day, they are going to need a wristband uh, to be on the property, as Jensen just indicated, but uh, they wouldn't have a traditional campsite registration. Uh, and we're, we will not include the adventure pass in our RV sites. So um, trying to make it easy, as Jensen said, you kind of come to camp, make a reservation, you got an accommodation, um, you're good to go. You can participate in everything that uh, we're trying to do uh, in with the adventure pass, but you don't have to. You can choose to do your own programming, which is perfectly fine and certainly incurred. Yeah, and one thing I'll add to that, Michael, is that we give you the opportunity to opt in um, into the Adventure Pass in those um, in the traditional campsites, the day use in the RV site, knowing that some units and some families are going to want to opt in and some are going to want to choose to do their own programming. And so it gives you the freedom to make that decision uh, that best suits you. Yeah, thank you for that, Jansen. All right, um, is a fishing license required? No, but you do need to have the adventure pass, as I just mentioned, uh, to be able to fish. Uh, are there fishing poles that I can check out? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We have poles uh, available. They're already rigged up. Um, pretty much all you have to do is put bait on it and be able to get that bait into the water and, and you can fish. Uh, so it makes it really easy. Uh, is the lake catch and release uh, only? Um, and the answer is yes. In order to maintain uh, the population of fish that we have, we ask that you throw all the fish back that you catch. Uh, we do have the Trottery Trout Tournament in January and February, and that's the only time where uh, we'll permit you to ke keep your catch. Um, what is the best fishing bait? Uh, you know, the answer to that question is whatever the fish are eating that day. Uh, but more specifically, um, worms, night crawlers, corn, hot dogs, artificial bait, anything that, um, like I said, they're going to eat. Um, they were eating hot dogs uh, uh, on our neighborhood preview. So um, interestingly enough, they're really good at taking them off the hook without touching the hook, too. So you got to actually be a fisher person. Um, what is the makerspace? So um, I, th I think first and foremost on the top of the list, the makerspace is where it's air conditioned. Uh, and you can go in and actually build projects, design your own art, uh, tie-dye your favorite shirt, brand a piece of leather or mug, 
Um, another question comes from that, where can I get uh, stuff for my project uh, and the makerspace? The answer is um, all of your create your own adventure projects can be purchased at the camp store located in the dining hall in the um, pine room. Uh, tie dyeing and branding resources are provided in your adventure pass, but you can purchase additional items at the camp store to uh, tie dye or brand uh, during the allotted times. Where can I learn more about family adventure camp? Well, the clue was given earlier in one of the videos. And so uh, you can go to the Longhorn Council website to FAC, Family Adventure Camp, to find all the latest information uh, and register. Um, how do I find out what activities and experiences are available for women I want to attend? And so the latest scheduling and adventure listing will be found uh, also on the longhorncouncil.org uh, FAC website. So you can check that out uh, to see if the kinds of things that you and your family want to participate in are being, are being offered uh, on that particular day or days that you were there. All right, fantastic. So that brings us to the end of our scheduled um, um, presentation, but I know there's been some questions that have come in into the chat room. Uh, and if you have any qu uh, questions or uh, need further clarification on anything that we've talked about so far uh, tonight, or maybe something else that you've heard or experienced in the past month, uh, please type that into the chat. Uh, and I'm going to call on uh, Kevin uh, to kind of uh, dish out those questions so that we can uh, provide answers to those. Yeah, uh, we're going to, we will eventually back up to the very first few questions that Larry had, but I do want to quickly touch base with the question that Jeff most recently put in. He was asking about uh, units uh, who want to provide their own supervision for shooting sports and boating. Uh, with this, uh, clearly, if we are operating a family adventure camp time, uh, the expectation would be that the unit would purchase uh, family passes or the adventure passes and be a part of our programming. Uh, with that being said, though, Adventure Camp is only one program that happens on property. So, Jeff, as your unit works with our team, if there's a time when you want to come out uh, for a unit level event and it's not a time when we've designated that we're going to be running the ranges with our people, uh, we can certainly work with you to operate those ranges uh, with your scouting group. Um, it's just a matter of scheduling and working with our team on when we're offering family venture camp, when we're not. Um, but hopefully, you know, uh, we can work together to utilize the space as efficiently as possible. And then at the very beginning, uh, Larry asked some great questions. So currently the way that uh, Camp Spot is set up with our traditional campsites, which would be bring your own tent, uh, we do have it just kind of set up as kind of numbered, uh, site 601 to 615. Uh, those numbers currently, um, and Jansen, correct me if I'm wrong, they don't necessarily uh, coordinate with exact locations on a camp. Uh, you know, if you are reserving a bring your own tent site, our team will work with you to find the location that's best for you guys in our traditional camping area. As we continue to build out the site though, those will become more defined. They might not follow the current naming pattern of our sites, uh, but we will be having kind of very clear defined sites so that you can choose on the map exactly where you're going to be. Uh, but that is in the next stage of this process. Um, so don't worry, so, we are going to be building those out and there'll be more camping opportunities than ever uh, on property. So the other part, a part of that too, uh, Kevin, is that uh, we are going to be providing 15 traditional uh, campsites that'll have a capacity of eight. Uh, and so, we're, so our thinking is that we'll have up to four tents per, per site uh, that would allow a family to, to be able to camp in that area. And so the idea being that we would take our traditional uh, campsites um, uh, that are um, uh, that are in our uh, in the traditional uh, campsite area that's on the map. I'm missing my my uh, direction, but that'll give us the opportunity to camp up to 120 people in those 15 sites. And then we have decided to have three um, uh, group uh, rustic uh, campsites um, that currently have the names of Lion's Den and Explore that are in that area. And then on the other end of camp, uh, there's an area um, on top of the bluff um, that's called uh, the Beat and Pal uh, Training Center uh, that has a couple of pavilions and the ability to camp there. Currently, Lion's Den and Explore uh, do, um, we are set to have a capacity of, of up to 100 uh, campers there. 
Uh, and this will be campery style a camping, uh, which means that uh, it's not the camp style where uh, you have all the room to necessarily do um, to do the cartwheels and activities around your tent, uh, but they would be packed in. Um, but the other part of that too is that the way the campsites are currently uh, configured now is not how they're going to end up being in the long term. And that's what we're working on over the course of this school year is that there are some trees that will be cleared, additional space um, that is made available. Um, and when I say the trees are going to be cleared, we want to be good stewards of the wonderful forest that we're blessed with, but also understand that there is some overgrowth that has taken place and the removal of some cedar trees is going to benefit um, our property in the long run, allowing for uh, grass and airflow uh, and some of the other um, um, more sustainable trees to start to flourish, oaks and uh, pecan trees and so on. And so that'll be, an, that'll be an evolution. So I appreciate the question, Larry. That's fantastic. You have any, any other questions, Kevin? Nothing at the moment. All right, fantastic. Well, again, thank you all so much uh, for being on our presentation tonight. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, it's folks like you that continue to uh, learn and uh, hear about what's going on uh, and also challenge us back uh, to make sure that we are doing the best that we possibly can uh, to, to deliver our number one tiered goal, which is deliver the mission of scouting to more young people. So uh, thank you all. Uh, we'll hang around here for a few more minutes. Uh, and if there's any other questions, plug those into the chat. Otherwise, we'll log off once all of you log off.